I want to turn your attention to Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse 19. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. I want to tell you, people's got heart problems tonight. Uh-oh. I'm not talking about physical. I'm talking about spiritual heart problems. They've got other treasures other than Christ. They've got other treasures other than the movement of the Holy Spirit. They've got other treasures out there tonight. But I'm telling you, my greatest treasure you'll ever have is the man called Jesus. The greatest one you'll ever know is this one they call Jesus Christ. Um, you know, I'm going to speak tonight on treasures of the heart a little bit. But I want to read these verses of Scripture, what Jesus said right here. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon this earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will be your heart be also did you hear that right there for where your treasure be there will be your heart also uh, heavenly father we come before you tonight lord and we ask you lord to just touch dear god and move it a mighty way lord uh, i pray lord for your anointing dear god lord uh, father i pray god for your spirit god and your touch dear god uh, anoint me to speak this message you've given me dear god Lord, we pray, Lord, for you to un let us understand that our greatest treasure should be focused upon you tonight. Uh, not the things of this earth, but the things above. Uh, Father, tonight we ask you, Lord, to just move in here, move in this community, send forth revival. Lord, and we exalt you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Uh, in the middle compartment of the chest, in the natural body, we got a vital organ called the heart. Uh, how many know we can't live without that? That heart. Uh, that heart functions as a body circulatory pump. Uh, it takes in the oxygenation blood through the veins and delivers it to the lungs for oxygenation before pumping it into various arteries, uh, which provides oxygen and nutrients uh, to the body tissue by transporting blood throughout the body. Uh, we know Leviticus 17 and 11 says, for the life of the flesh is in what? Uh, in the blood. Uh, and the natural heart pumps blood around the body. Uh, but if that natural heart doesn't function properly, we can find ourselves in some bad shape. Uh, if that natural heart gives out on us, uh, we can't live without that natural heart. Uh, but I'm not here to be a heart doctor in the natural realm. Uh, I don't think nobody in here would want me to perform open heart surgery on them. I don't think so. I don't have that kind of ability. But the kind of heart I'm talking to tonight is a spiritual heart. I'm talking about that spiritual heart, that thing that draws us, that thing that we center our life around. And I want you to know that many spiritual heart is not pumping like it ought to be. It ain't pumping the blood. It ain't beating like it ought to be beaten uh, but many have had a spiritual heart attack uh, meaning their heart ain't in the right place uh, meaning their treasure's not right here where it needs to be uh, but their treasure is set up upon this earth uh, I want you to know tonight that the heart is the center of life uh, Proverbs 4 and 23 tells us uh, keep thy heart with all of thy diligence uh, for out of it uh, are the issues of life uh, what are you talking about preacher I'm talking about those things which you are drawn to uh, those things what your life centers around uh, those things what you support uh, how many know what you support that's where your heart's at tonight anybody know what I'm talking about uh, those that you give financially to those that you give your time to uh, those that you give your attention to uh, that's what you can find out very quickly where someone's heart is at tonight uh, I don't know about you but I I can't think of a better place to be than to be in the house of God on this Wednesday night. I, I don't know about you, but I can't think of a better place to be than in the presence of Jehovah God tonight. I, I don't know about you, but I can't think of a better place to be is lifting up and singing praises unto the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I, I don't know about you, but it just gets me excited to know it's about time to go into the Lord's house. It's about time to get on fire. It's about time to get up behind the pulpit and speak a message.
message. It's about time to lift up our hands unto God tonight. What we support, what we spend our time to, what we give our attention to, that's the center of your life. That's your heart. What are you talking about tonight? I'm talking about some people's hearts are out of place. They're more focused on pleasures than they are the things of God. How many know you can go to a let me let, what, what was that Wednesday night? You can go to a golf course, and the golf course will be still be open. There'll be people out there playing this time of the night. You can go to a lake, and I love the fish. Don't get me wrong, I'm a fisherman. I can catch a fish better than I can kill a deer any day. But what I'm telling you right now, the lakes would still be full while the house of God will still be empty. What are you getting at? Some people are more drawn to the things of this world than they are to the things of God. There's other things tonight. Even some people can get so caught up in the cares of life that that's where their heart revolves around we're getting ready to go there here in just a few minutes but I want you to know those things which consume one those things which that grabs your attention before anything else that's where your heart lies at tonight if your heart lies with that football team more than it does God understand your heart is in Dallas Texas tonight I'm telling you tonight <laughs> Somebody caught on to that right there. I'm telling you. But if your heart uh, is on somewhere else other than the things of God, uh, I'm telling you right now, uh, uh, we better get our hearts in order. Why, there ain't nothing wrong with watching a football game. But let me tell you, I'd rather spend time more in the presence of God tonight. Uh, I'd rather spend time more uh, giving out Him praise. Uh, I'd rather be spending time uh, getting lost in the sweet power and presence uh, of the Holy Ghost. Anybody know what I'm talking about? tonight where your heart is there's where your treasure will be at tonight they are many then Paul wrote in 2 Timothy 2 and 3 and 4 he said in the last days here's what he says traitors high minders high minded listen to this what he said they would become lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God what are you saying preacher I'm saying we are seeing the words of Paul fulfilled right before our very eyes. He didn't say they didn't love God. He said they loved their pleasures more than they loved him. How many tonight? Let's just get it down to the level. I'm getting ready to hit here in a few minutes. I may put my foot in my mouth. That's all right. It came, I've already probably got half the world mad at me for what I preached the other night on speaker. That's all right, too. Listen to what I'm telling you. How many tonight sitting on a ball field than rather been in the house of God? Amen. How many goes weeks without time, without even getting in his presence on their knees and in his work? How many can go days and days, but yet they can't go a minute watching their favorite TV show on the TV? Amen. You know how they got it? Many are today. They said, well, I got this. We're going to set, make sure that we are home. And we're going to make sure that we're spending our time. We're going to get their favorite program on. They won't miss that program. I wish some saints of God would get like that. I wish some saints of God would get that hungry for God. I wish the saints of God would get their heart that good with God that says no matter what I'm going to do, I'm going to call out to you. No matter what I'm going to do, I'm going to seek your face. No matter what I can do, I'm going to be in your house. No matter what it takes, I'm going to support the cause of God. No matter what, I'm telling you tonight, it's time we get our priorities in order. Jesus is coming and time's short tonight. People don't realize how close this thing is. I'm no longer looking for signs, by the way. I've told you this anyway. I see all of them. I'm just now got my ears in tune. Is that a trumpet I'm hearing? Is that a shofar I'm hearing blowing? That's what I'm waiting to hear next. 
Anybody else with me? I'm waiting to hear a shofar blow. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm waiting to hear that trump blow in heaven in the twinkling of an eye. It's going to be faster than the world would ever be faster than anybody. I even know it. It just look quicker than blinking your eyes. And just a, just a tip. That's a, that quick. Let's just use it like that. And the blink of an eye quicker than that. This thing's going to change. And people don't realize how close we are sitting to that. People don't know, cl- realize how close the great tribulation is. How many know God's getting ready to rain down judgment? Anybody know what I'm talking about? You can't shake your fist in the face of God and expect God not to do nothing in return. You ain't going to poke your finger in the eyes of God and expect not God not to do anything in return for it. Let me tell you, they think it's harmless arch, putting an arch temple of Baal up right there. Let me tell you, God don't think it's harmless and God ain't, take, God ain't taking no pleasure in it. It's going to invite the devil back into that city. But this is where we're at. People's priorities are so out of whack they don't even know what's going on anymore. Their heart is more fixed towards earth than it is towards heaven. I'm telling you, it's time we get our hearts in order. It's time we get our priorities in order. It's time we say, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Anybody else with me tonight? Don't surprise the Christ. Let me tell you, in Luke chapter 14, verse 16 through 23, I'm not going to read it all, but let me tell you, Right here, we see a great supper was prepared. He sent out invitations. He sent out word. Three, he gives right here, originally accepted the invitation. In verse 18, listen, and they all with one consent begin to what? Make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must needs go and see it. I pray you have me excused. How many, first of all, how many is going to buy a piece of property without seeing that property first? If you want to, let me sell you some oceanfront property down in Tennessee or something. No, it was just an excuse right here. The second one said, I have five, bought five piece, five yoke of oxen and I go to prove them. I pray you have me excused. How many would buy a car without test driving the car and looking under the hood first? Amen. You're going to make sure it's in working order. You would think this man would have test looked at those ox and proved them before he would have bought them. But it was just another reason to miss the invitation. Verse 20. This was the one. It hits. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. Well, he could have brought her, but instead he began to make an excuse why he could not come. Can I tell you what they give was not the real issue? The real issue wasn't the wife. The real issue wasn't the land. It wasn't the oxen. The real issue, their heart was not into the supper. Their heart was not there. It was focused on the materialistic things. They were, instead of having their heart fixed towards that great invite, they began to say, we're going to have our heart fixed towards everything else. I begin to think about that. Layman's terms. Let's just put it like this. Their heart was fixed more towards the earthly things than they did the things of God. Uh oh. Can I tell you, here's problem 101 in 2016 in the modern church among believers. The heart is more fixed towards the earthly, sensual things than it is towards the heavenly things. The eyes are more focused here on this earth than it is Christ. Anybody know what I'm talking about? People say I'd rather do this and that than be in the house of God. People say I'd rather do this and that than study my Bible. People ain't got a heart for Christ like they once did. Anybody know what I'm talking about? 
we need to get some priorities in order. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if you're lukewarm and indifferent and you're looking towards this earth, when he blows that trumpet, you're going to still be looking on this earth. He ain't coming back for a bride that's lukewarm and indifferent. Anybody know what I'm talking about? He's coming back for a bride that's on fire. He's coming back for a bride that's got its priorities in order, one that's faithful towards him. He's coming back for ones that's looking for him, not the ones that ain't looking for him. But too many people's got their eyes fixed on this earth, thinking it's going to be here forever. Well, I'm getting ready to tell you, the things of this earth shall pass. This body that you're in right now will pass one way or the other, either by the grave or by the rapture. There's going to be a transformation of it. The things out here we're seeing shall go to pass. I don't know about you, but I'm seeing a change in the United States of America quickly. It ain't the good old, I'm still glad to live here more than any other nation, but I want you to know tonight, it is changing for the worst. The erodence of freedom, we are beginning to see the stage arise for the new world order. If we ain't already in it, but we're seeing it arrive for the man of sin to come on the scene eventually. But I'm telling you, we can't look at the things going on. I've got to keep my mind on the prize. I've got to say that my mind's made up. Then I'm going to serve the Lord no matter what. Because my treasure's not here. But my treasure's in heaven tonight. Anybody know what I'm talking about? All this shall perish. But I've got a treasure that's waiting on me for eternity. All these things is going to go. These things are going to perish. That land would be put in somebody else's hand eventually. If you go by the grave, those oxen will pass away. That wife will be gone one day. I'm telling you right now what I'm saying. I'm telling you the problem today is just like Jesus said. They said that because iniquity abound, the love of many shall wax cold. People more in love with the world than they are Christ. Ain't that a shame? You know what's happened? They've got settled here in Egypt. Egypt was the representative of the world. Let me tell you, some of them settled in Sodom with all these things. We act like, many act like now seeing two men kiss or two women kiss. Ain't nothing. It still ought to turn your stomachs. I don't have to get used to nothing like that. And I'm not going to get used to it. But people are settled right here. Their eyes are fixed right here. They're walking around like ever, they're going to be here forever. Let me tell you, you ain't going to be here forever in this body. Did you hear me? This thing going to pass. This thing going to be done away with. You're one breath away from that. You're one trumpet away from that. But everybody, people's got their eyes fixed down here like they got plenty of time. I got news for you. You don't have plenty of time. I got news for you tonight. You don't know how much time you got left. You don't. There ain't one of us in here that knows how much time we got left. You need to think about that. Before you leave here, you could beat him tonight. And people walking around like acting like they got plenty of time left. Thanking God so lightly. Taking the things of God so slack and indifferent. They're more focused on this world than they are the heavenly things. Let me tell you, if people believe that Jesus could come as quick as they did, this house would be full tonight. If people believe that Jesus could show up right here and right now, let me tell you, schedules would quickly change. If people around literally believed in hell, let me tell you, altars would be full. Amen? If the saints of God would get a vision of eternity again, altars would be full and the houses of God would be full again. But the problem is, many have got so focused on the things of this earth. They've laid up their treasures here. Like Jesus talked about the man that filled his barns. He said, I'll have plenty. Listen to what Jesus said. Tonight, 
thy fool tonight. Thy soul shall be required of thee. He wasn't thinking about eternity. He was looking at the earthly things. Folks, let me tell you, those earthly things are going to perish. If you're here long enough, you own a house, that house is going to be in somebody else's name one day if the Lord tarries that long. That house can be burnt down in just a quick. Someone can break into it, but people ain't in love with Jesus like they once loved. They're growing cold because they're falling in love with the world. I'm telling you right now, I ain't got nothing in the world that I want to love. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh, if you love heartache, you love misery, you love pain, and you love suffering, it's for you. I don't. Anybody anybody like that? I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to the day where they ain't no more heartache. They ain't no more pain. They ain't no more uh, uh, misery and no more sickness. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm keeping my mind on Christ tonight. I've got to be more in love with Christ than I am anyone. Hey, people ain't in love with Christ. They're more in love with everything else but Christ. Heart ain't where it needs to be. They're in need of a heart transplant, a spiritual heart transplant. They need to get a hold of the king again and let him do something with them like the first time they were saved. Anybody remember the first day you were saved? Let me tell you, you couldn't help but to tell somebody about Jesus. Do you still have that love that you once have? Are you still in love with him like he was from day one? I'm telling you right now, that day, that love of Christ ought to grow. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It gets sweeter as the days go by. The fact is, Biddy, because their hearts love gone cold as their, more, their earthly treasure is settled right down here. They're looking to the things of this earth to give them treasures. They're, they're saying, this is what we're living for. We're living for this. We're living for that. We're living for a moment's time. There's people like that. It says, I'm living for the next high. I'm living for the next buzz. I'm living to make, get myself... You, uh, how do you say a billion billionaire or something like that? I'm telling you, they ain't got no thought of eternity. People got their treasures down here. Jesus said it right here in verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon this earth where moth and rust does corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. A man's aim will determine his character. Did you hear me? What you aim for will determine who you are. Did you hear me? What you aim for will determine who, you, who what you are. If you're hungry for him, you're going to seek after him. Did you hear me? If you're hungry for him, you're going to come calling upon him. Amen? If you're hungry for him, you're going to be in the house of God. If you're hungry for him, you're going to be in the word of God. But I'm telling you, if your eyes are fixed upon this world, you're going to put everything else but him. You're going to put everything else before him. I'm telling you, we've got to get our mind off of this world, and we better get our mind on Christ tonight. Jesus told us about these earthly treasures. What he said right here, he said moss and rust will corrupt them. That means they're going to perish. Did you hear me? That means this, thing, this building in here, it's a beautiful building, ain't it? But if it stands long enough, it's going to crumble. Did you hear me? The finest houses in the world are going to crumble one of these days. The stock market, one crash and everything can be wiped out. And all those dollar bills, $100 bills, $50 bills could be nothing worth more than just starting a fire with. Amen. It can corrupt these earthly things. It can, these can break through and steal them. Amen. At least something valuable out. Leave the window down. You don't even have to leave the window down. They'll bust right through it. If they see something they want, they'll grab a hold of it. How many know there's a spiritual thief out there that's out to steal, kill, and destroy? He begins to see where you got your eyes focused. Guess what he's going to place before you? He's going to place the kingdoms of this world before you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But I'm like Jesus told him, my kingdom's not of this world. 
He's going to take dominion of this world one of these days. He's going to rule this world with a rod of iron. He said, but I ain't in this, age, this system right here. How many know tonight we better not make our, or we better not get our minds focused on, on gaining this world because it don't mean a hill of beans. You're only here for a little while. I'm telling you. I tell people, I said, I may not have a mansion here, but I got one waiting on me on the other side. It's beyond description. I ain't seen it, but I know because it's told me. I tell people, I said, I probably got the fine. This is the finest up there. I probably will have about 15 feet of snow in my yard. <laughs> because he said he'd give me the desires of my heart. <laughs> he'll do that. Yeah, he'll do that here too, 15 feet of snow, by the way. Thank you, Junior. He just opened it for me. <laughs> there he goes. He spoke it right there. I'm telling you. But people have their, they're drawn to this world. And they don't even, many don't even realize they're making a graven image out of it. Did you hear me? Anything that takes you away from God is nothing more than a graven image. Anything you bow down before, before you bow before God is nothing more than an idol. Uh-oh. I thought an idol was a little wooden statue. <laughs> no. It can be. Buddha's a little wooden statue, but I'm telling you, people's got the idols of everything else before God. That idol can consist of anything or anyone that you place before him. Did you hear me? Anything that takes the place of God in your life is nothing more than an idol. Did you hear me? People are bowing down to graven images and they don't even realize it. Ask yourself, where's them graven images going to be when you're laying on the hospital bed and you got stage four cancer? Can they save you then? Uh-uh. Can I tell you, all the money in the world can't save a man that's set up with cancer and laying there? There ain't nothing else they can do. But I know one that can reach down from above and just by one touch, he can be made whole just that quick. Anybody know what I'm saying tonight? I don't need to bow down to an image when I know the God above all gods tonight. He's King of kings and Lord of lords. It's graven images. They think we're crazy. I'm old school Pentecostal. Anybody know what I'm talking about? They think we're crazy. I know I am. I ain't going to sit here and tell you no lie. I know I'm crazy. I'm crazy for Jesus. They think we're crazy because we like to run. They think they're crazy because I like to jump around. Well, if you get a little touch of Jesus, you'll jump around too. Anybody know what I'm saying? You get a little touch of Jesus, you'll know what I'm talking about. They don't think the world's crazy, but they think we're crazy. They think they got something to shout for. Well, Lordy, I got something to shout for. You got something to shout, shout for, that your God's coming again. They think the Pentecostals are crazy for shouting. Why don't they think we're cra they're crazy for shouting at a ball game? You ever seen those up in Green Bay? I like picking on Green Bay. Because it's the coldest place to have a football game at. I don't care how cold it is or what the weather is. It can be 15 below zero. And there will always be some of these men out there with their shirts off. Jumping up and down like this with their belly painted. I don't know about you, but I think that's just a little bit crazy right then and there. And they think we're crazy because my feet get a moving for Jesus a little bit. I'm telling you right now, that pigskin ain't going to do me a bit of good. It ain't coming back for me. But that one I'm shouting for, he come out of the grave on the third day. And he said, this same Jesus, as you've seen in the book of Acts of Sin, is the same Jesus that will come again. We better get our priorities in order. I'm saying, get that little Holy Ghost two-step going. And this world needs some fire, don't it? 
It needs some electricity going. Get your eyes on Christ. It don't need a dead doormat religion. Did you hear me? It don't need somewhere it tolerates sin. Amen. It detests me to hear these denominations bringing in sin, unordaining sin that God calls me, calls an abomination. I don't know about you, but I want to be somewhere God's spirit moves. I thank God we allow his spirit to move around here. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. We need some old-fashioned, old-fashioned, good old-fashioned Holy Ghost services again. We need some old-fashioned hell, fire, and brimstone preaching again. We need some to say, I'm not ashamed to serve the Lord. We need some to say, my treasure's not here, that my treasure's above. You may want to know what my treasure is. You'll see him one of these days. One way or the other, you'll see him one of these days. You'll either bow for him now or you'll bow to him later. They'll f soon find out what that treasure you've talked about all along was. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. Uh, he's our treasure. He's our first. He's our last. He's our only hope tonight. But many have become like Ephesus. They left their first love. Can we tell you what happened to Ephesus? They got more attached to the world than they did God. You know what Jesus said? You know what Christ said? He said, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? And what shall a man give in exchange for his soul. You ever thought about that? 30 pieces of silver Judas sold him out. Was it worth it? No. People are selling him out for far less today. The rich man in Luke 16 had everything he would ever have. You know, like I've told you, if anybody ought to be blessed, I believe it's God's people ought to be blessed. But the problem was, he allowed his material and his wealth to become his God. It mastered him. Amen. He had everything. Until the day he took his last breath. And can I tell you right now, if you could talk to him, he would have given everything to get back up and be in the place of Lazarus who didn't have nothing, but found himself comforted. What does it good if you gain everything but lose out? People thinking they're gaining the world and don't realize their life is just on a string like this. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm saying they don't realize how close they are to eternity. I don't believe nobody in here, we probably all don't realize how close we are. We're probably closer than we all realize. I believe we're closer to the Lord than we realize to anybody else with me on that. But they'll spend all their life. Some will say, Get, I'll have plenty of time. You don't have plenty of time. You don't know what tomorrow holds. You don't know what the next hour holds or the next five minutes holds. People are so fixed towards the world. So if you gain the world and you lose out with God, what good's it going to do you? Did you hear me? People are more minded towards the things of this earth than they are the things of God. These things of this earth will perish. Remember what Paul said, these things which are seen are temporal. The temporal thing shall vanish, it shall perish, it shall go away. But I'm telling you, we need to lay up heavenly treasures. Matthew 6 and 20. He said, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. How many know Paul also wrote to the Colossians church, chapter 3, verse 2. He said, set your affections on the things above, not on the things of this earth. Right there. Where's our affection at tonight? Is our heart right and pure before him? 
I've heard people make comments before, especially evangelizing. I don't want Jesus to come yet because I got more things to do on this earth. And I think to myself, really? I want him to come right now. Anybody else with me? Anybody else with me? I want him to come right now. You don't know how bad I want him to come right now. I'm ready to see what's above. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I've seen what's here. I'm ready to see that which I can't really comprehend in our mind because it's so great and it's so glorious what he has prepared for us on the other side. But let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you, all the great things he's got there, it wouldn't be heaven without him. I can't wait to see him. That's where our affection is. That's where our heart is. Let me tell you, he's eternal. Let me get it to you right here on this level. I need Jesus more than I need anything on this world. I need Jesus more than I need material things. I need Jesus more than I need pleasure. I need Jesus more than I need friends. Did you hear me? I need Jesus more than I need careers. Did you hear what I'm saying? I need Jesus more than anyone or anything. You see, I can live without all that, but I can never make it without him tonight. My heart better be fixed right with him. Our heart better be right with him. Let me tell you, he's got to be number one in our heart. I'll tell you who's got it second. My little girl's got number two right there. <laughs> but Jesus first, and she'll come second. I'm telling you right then and there, that's the way it ought to be. Jesus has got to be first. The things of God's got to be first. And everything else shall be added unto you. I don't know about you, but I can't wait to get there tonight. I can't wait to see him face to face. Yes, I know we got others we want to see there. But the one I want to see is Jesus. Before I see anyone or anything else, I want to see the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You know, we need to get our hearts right. We need to make sure our affections are set upon him and not the things of this world. We better make sure our eyes are set upon him and not the things of this world. We better make sure our heart is attentive unto the things of God more than the things of this world and the cares of this life. So what if you gain the world? If you miss out with God, what good's it going to do you? I'm telling you, Jesus has got to be first. The things of God has got to be priority. Did you hear me? Folks, I'm just going to tell you, if God don't get priority when that trumpet blows, he's not coming back for those that played, he played second fiddle with. He's coming back for those that's on fire. He's coming back for those who set out to seek him. He's coming back for those that look for him. And I, the argument can be made, and I'll make this argument all day. Those that put, make God sick at fiddle ain't really looking for him. Did you hear me? Those that make God sick at fiddle ain't really hungry for him. Hey Amen. God that throw God, those that put God on the shelf like a book and only take him off when they need him. Their heart's not where it needs to be. They need to get their hearts and prioritized. They need to get their treasures on the things above and not, not on the things of this earth. I'm telling you, those things above, they're eternal. Those, how many know Paul told us to look at those things which are unseen because the unseen is eternal. He was saying, set your affections on the things above. He said, look towards God. Look towards Christ. Get your heart in order. He says, Jesus said those heavenly treasures are eternal. They cannot corrupt and rust. The moth won't get a hold of them, and they ain't going to be stolen. They're well guarded up there, by the way. Let me tell you what Jesus, I believe he told the rich young ruler. He said, go and sell what you have and give to the poor. Thus shall have treasure in heaven. See, that rich young ruler was... He was more 
possessed by his possessions than he was Jesus. He said, if you want him, he said, let me see how bad you want me. Give away everything you've got, then follow me, then you shall have treasure. What he was, Jesus was doing, he said, I want to find out who's going to be first in your life. I want to find out what's going to take priority in your life. I want to find out what's got your heart. What's got your attention? Does your possessions have your, t- your heart or will I have your heart? We know the story that rich wrong ruler walked away with his head down because he couldn't do what Jesus asked. The fact is Jesus wouldn't have had his heart. Folks, I want to tell you what he's looking for tonight. He's looking for somebody that says, I want your heart. I want you to have, want me more than anything. I want you to set your affections above and not on the things of this earth. I believe God is still telling, wanting some people tonight to say, get your heart on the things above. Lay up your treasures in heaven, not on the things of this earth. Because I'm telling you, God's got something far greater for you than the things of this earth can ever offer. Anybody else agree with that tonight? But we've got to have our heart in order. Everyone standing in here tonight, if you're able. How many tonight would say, Lord, where's your treasure at? Is my heart fixed towards this earth or is it fixed towards heaven? How many tonight would say, I want to have my heart set on the things above. I want my my affection set upon him tonight. I want to be more in love with Jesus than I've ever have. Maybe tonight you need to get your heart in order. Maybe you get the priorities in order. Maybe tonight you need to say, Lord, I've not given all that I needed to give. My affections ain't been where it needed to be. I want to get back looking towards you. Maybe the more some would say, here am I, Lord. I want to grow more in love with you than I've ever grown in love with you. I want to grow deeper in you more than I've ever grown deeper in you. I want to look towards you more than I've ever looked towards you. Who would here tonight would say that? Here am I. I'm a hungry heart. I want to set my affections more upon you than I've ever had. If I don't gain nothing else in this world, I want to gain you more of you tonight. Is there others that would say, here am I, Lord. Lord, get, here's my heart. These things in this earth will perish. The things of this earth will be gone. But if we lay our treasures up in heaven, they're eternal. They won't rust. They won't corrupt. And they won't perish. Just give me Jesus tonight. Just give me Jesus. Just give me Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.